And I am so sorry if you hear Uzi snoring in the back. Is that gonna be a thing, this whole video? Go! So, pour yourself a coffee. Hi friends, my name is Coco and I'm a Canadian plant hobbyist from Toronto, Ontario. And today we are gonna talk pet safe plants. Before we get started, um, just a little disclaimer that I am no vet, nor am I a botanist. So I'm not an expert in animals and I'm not an expert um, in plants. And I also just wanna make a little disclaimer that what's toxic to dogs may not be toxic to cats and vice versa. I know they have different lists. The way I'm gonna organize this video is I'm gonna go from my cheapest pet safe plant to the most expensive pet safe plant. And I'll, I'll also go into um, some information about how to take care of these plants. So to begin, let's get started with one of my first and favorite is this Parlor Palm. Now I got her for $3.95 at Valley View Nursery here in Ontario. And they are just such a fantastic, such a cute, awesome plant. Um, super duper easy to take care of. I just water when it's about. When the top inch of the soil is dry, I put her in bright and direct light. And I know these technically like higher humidity, but honestly, I've never had any issue. I've never had any browning tips. She's never been by a humidifier. So just a really great pet safe plant all in all. The next pet safe plant is a common plant, but I actually don't see them in nurseries that often here in, um, in Canada. And that plant is the aluminum plant. Now mine is actually, I got very lucky. Um, I found a variegated one among the bunch. So it has these beautiful white variegation. Normally the leaves look like this. They kind of just have a silvery, um, a silvery pattern to them, but I got really lucky. I went one early morning to Valley View and I ended up seeing a variegated one, so I bought her. And they are actually normally very fast growers. My sister has a normal one and hers has is beyond belief like how big hers has gotten but i'm assuming because mine is variegated and variegated plants tend to photo photosynthesize a lot slower because of the white leaves um white leaves can't photosynthesize so i'm assuming that's why mine is so slow growing but i give her bright light i water when dry and she has not been finicky with me at all hasn't been finicky with the humidity level at all um and she was 395 from valley view the next plant I got was also $3.95 from Valley View, but I wouldn't recommend it to any beginner plant parents. And any experienced plant parent, you'll know why. This is the Red Maranta, the Red Maranta Prayer Plant, and a stunning, beautiful plant has awesome red striped foliage and even the underleaf of the leaf is a uh, red but the reason i wouldn't recommend this to any plant parent is because um they are very high maintenance in terms of humidity what water they like the light level um these specific red red maranta players like really low light now you have to remember with prayer plants they grow on forest grounds which means they really only get dapple of sunlight um, and when you buy plants, you really want to make sure you mimic their, their surroundings. So I don't let this one climb because they are more of spreaders. They're not climbers. And the reason why I love the fact that this is a pet safe plant is because these tend to go on my lower shelves where Uzi is, you know, is accessible to. So if you have cats or if you have dogs who roam around and you, you have plants on bottom shelves, these are really, really a really great option to put on your bottom shelves. One, because they like really low light. Two, because they are pet safe. But they do tend to like high humidity, which is why there's some crisping on my leaves, but it's not a big deal. Um, she only had two leaves when I bought her last September and that she is just sprouting into a monster and she even has some new growth. But um, if you're ready kind of to up your plant game and ready for a more challenging plant, I definitely would go for prayer plants. They are quite easy to find kind of a challenge but once you get the hang of it it is both rewarding and it's just i mean they're beautiful the next plant i'm about to show you guys is another plant i would not recommend to any beginner plant parent because they are notorious for being divas and that would be the calathea <laughs> now this one is a calathea ornata or calathea pinstripe and it has these beautiful pink striped leaves this is one of my favorite plants actually really really one of just it's just such a great plant it's beautiful mine hasn't been all that diva diva ish diva e but uh, maybe i'm just lucky or maybe i'm just giving her the care she likes now 
depending what Calathea you get, they really, they'll range in what type of light they like. The, Calath the Calathea Ornata loves really, really low light. So she is also a plant that is on the bottom shelf in my office, again, right beside where Uzi sleeps. So a really great plant option for me because um, even if Uzi were to bite it, I wouldn't be concerned. But they are very high maintenance in terms of humidity. She hates being underwatered. Calatheas do not like dry soil. So you really do have to constantly water them. Um, and what I do is I water frequently, but little at a time. So I'm just always making sure the soil is damp and not wet. She's getting low light. She's right by a humidifier and she seems really happy. I actually made the rookie mistake. Calatheas do not like to be fertilized. At least they don't like a lot of fertilizer. I totally forgot that and I burnt two leaves off. So don't make that mistake. Um, but again, that's what plants are here for. They're here, they're, you know, here to teach us. So um, another beautiful, great pet safe plant if you are ready to up your plant game or ready for a challenge. So these next two plants I'm gonna show you are actually a new obsession of mine. And when I say that, I, I think people are gonna get shocked because there is just this craze for these plants and I've never understood it until this month because my friend Alfred got me addicted to them and those are Hoyas! So never in my two years of collecting plants did I ever care for Hoyas. Never cared for them, never liked them, thought they were overpriced, thought they were kind of ugly and then I don't know this month happened and I bought four new ones. So this one is actually a rare Hoya Susie Q and she has beautiful variegation. I actually got her for $10 at Valley View, and I've seen people selling her for $600, which is outrageous. Don't buy it for $600, that is outrageous, but these are on the more rare side. I haven't seen them in any other nursery. I didn't even know what I was picking up that day, truthfully. I thought this was a Hoya Crimson, Crimson, Crimson Queen, but I just found out two weeks ago it's a Suzy Q. Yeah, I'm very happy I picked her up for $10 because, um, the plant craze is definitely, has definitely driven her price up. Other Hoya that I'm also obsessed with, because she's pink as well, and I love pink plants, would be the Hoya Crimson Queen. Classic Hoya, beautiful pink leaves, pink and white and green leaves. And I mean, she is, come on guys. I just, I'm in love. I don't know. I don't know what's gotten into me. But Hoyas are also very easy to take care of, so I actually do recommend them to beginner plant parents. My secret to fast growth with Hoyas is a tip that my friend Andrew from Plant Hut here in Toronto has given me, the owner of Plant Hut, Andrew, has given me. He told me to let the soil really dry out and give them bright light. And I kid you not, this girl, I mean, also maybe because it was winter, but I got her in... in fall the end of summer and she was she put out like two leaves in like six months so um finally she's starting to grow ever since i implement i implemented andrew's tip and that tip is to let them dry out and give them lots of sun and i don't know they love that they love dry soil they love bright light i water when dry and that's it i keep these by a west facing window but they are on a lower shelf and again accessible to uzi and i don't have to worry if uzi gets into them but he never has, hopefully he never will, but again, just peace of mind. So Hoyas are, they are on the more expensive side. I bought this one for 20, this one was 10, but I don't know, I'm so in love. So the next plant I'm gonna show you is a basic plant, but one of my favorites. This is the Peperomia Hope. So she is so fun. I just love her little circular leaves. I don't know, she's just, it's so cute to me. Like, look at that and super fast growers. I put my peperomias in medium to bright light just because I find that they thrive. And this girl, I brought her, I bought her like three weeks ago maybe, and she's grown at least two inches. I water when dry and I find that they thrive in medium to bright light. You can put them in low light, but they just won't grow as fast. But yeah, such a great plant, easy to propagate. I was having trouble finding these for a really long time. Then all of a sudden in spring, all the nurseries got them. So really easy to find, easy to take care of. I recommend to any beginner plant parent. And I don't know, peperomias are just cute. I'm not the biggest fan of peperomias, but this is definitely one of my favorite ones. So we love her. And the last plant that I'm gonna show you guys is this big boy right here. And this is my burgundy rubber tree that my boyfriend got me for Valentine's Day this year. Another super beginner friendly um, plant. 
I just put this in medium to low light. This guy's actually in low light. He's living in the basement, but we do bring him up. Don't worry. Almost every day for light beside a east facing window. So he really likes that. I've never had any trouble with pests with him. I've never had any trouble with Uzi biting him. I've never had any trouble with him, period. So um, obviously this is a big size. So he was, I believe, 50 or $60 from Vandermeer Nursery, but you can get smaller ones from $14. And I don't find them the fastest growers, but if you do give them brighter light, they, they do tend to push out growth more, but definitely on the slower side of growing. But hopefully one day this guy will be a great big giant ficus tree. Okay, when well, this is Uzi, he is our my boyfriend and I's um, one year old French bulldog, a very large French bulldog. Um, my parents think he's half pit bull. He's not. We got him up uh, at a breeder up north here in Ontario, and he turned one on April thirtieth. And we took him home almost exactly a year ago, uh, June twenty seventh, twenty twenty. He is so cuddly, so loving but also crazy. So, um, but we love him regardless. And he's just a sweet, very big boy. People who've seen our Instagram always says he looks so small on Instagram, but then when they meet him in real life, they're like, he's huge. Um, yeah, he's definitely the biggest French bulldog I've ever met. No, he's not fat. He's just skeletal wise. He's very, very large. Um, so yeah, Uzi's been very good with my plants. He's, he's never eaten one of my plants. He, Holy is completely 100% uninterested in my plants. They are way too boring for him, thankfully. But people always ask how I taught him how to ignore my plants. Honestly, I think the moment he realized plants aren't doing anything for him or they, they don't offer him anything fun, he kind of ignored them. I never really had to teach him anything. As a puppy, he did bite off one of my golden pothos leaves, which are known to be mildly toxic to dogs, but nothing ever happened. I don't even think he swallowed it. He kind of just ripped it off and Ever since then, we've never had an incident, thankfully. But if you are concerned about, you know, having pets or having plants around your pets, just kind of try putting them in a secluded area or gate that area off to your pets. Um, normally, I find that people really don't have issues with pets and plants. And I think just give it a try. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again Friday for my next video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye, y'all.